the self-proclaimed republics of Donetsk and Luhansk. Now, they are situated at the east of Ukraine and these are the two areas that Russia has recognized as independent from the entire country of Ukraine. Now, to understand the situation that is happening today, we have to look back at history. In 2014, as you know, Russia annexed Crimea, which is this part of Ukraine. And when they annexed Crimea, an armed uprising began in these two regions. Uh, these rebels who started the uh, armed uprising were supported by Russia. They were armed, uh, they were provided weapons by Russia and their independence is not recognized uh, by the international community and Ukraine and the West say that Russia has instigated an uprising in the East by pouring in weapons and bols uh, through the border and bolstering these regions. Now, with that being said, this is what the Russian president had to say about the move Russia made yesterday. Russia's recognition of separatist regions in eastern Ukraine is a direct challenge to the West backed by the United States. It fuels fears that Russia could imminently invade Ukraine. Ukrainian forces are locked in a nearly eight-year conflict with Russia-backed separatists that has left more than 14,000 people dead. I consider it necessary to take a long overdue decision to immediately recognize the independence and sovereignty of Don's People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic. I am asking the Federal Assembly of the Russian Federation to support this decision and then ratify treaties of friendship and mutual assistance with both republics. The announcement by Russia has drawn anger from Western nations. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said fresh sanctions would be imposed on Russian banks and some businessmen while freezing their assets and banning them from UK. Today, the UK is sanctioning the following five Russian banks. Rossiya, IS Bank, Gen General Bank, Promzias Bank and the Black Sea Bank. And we are sanctioning three very high net worth individuals, Gennady Timchenko, Boris Rottenberg and Igor. Rottenberg. Any assets they hold in the UK will be frozen. The individuals concerned will be banned from travelling here. And we will prohibit all UK individuals and entities from having any dealings with them. In 2015, Germany and France brokered a peace agreement. This agreement was signed by representatives from Russia, Ukraine and leaders of these territories. This was an important milestone in reaching a solution when it comes to the Ukraine crisis because this agreement prompted a pullback of heavy weapons from the region and encouraged a political solution. But now that Russia has recognized uh, Donetsk and Luhansk as independent regions and have agreed to supply weapons to them as well, it is a clear violation of the 2015 agreement. And this has drawn critical responses from the United Nations, the United States and even Ukraine at the yesterday's Security Council meeting. The UN political chief opened an emergency meeting of the Security Council calling Russia's recognition of separatist areas in Ukraine's east a violation of the country's territorial integrity and sovereignty. The Secretary General considers the decision of the Russian Federation to recognize the independence of certain areas of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions to be a violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and inconsistent with the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. We very much regret this decision, which risks having regional and global repercussions. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations said Russia's announcement is an unprovoked attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Russia's clear attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity is unprovoked. It is an attack on Ukraine's status as a U.N. member state. It violates a basic principle of international law and it defies our charter. What is more, this move by President Putin is clearly the basis for Russia's attempt to create a pretext for a further invasion of Ukraine. The Russian announcement also drew criticism from Ukraine. We are on our land. We are not afraid of anything or anyone. We owe nothing to anyone and we will not give away anything to anyone. Now, meanwhile, Sri Lanka has issued an advisory to all Sri Lankans 
living in Ukraine. Let's take a look at that statement. The foreign ministry is requesting all Sri Lankans to avoid unessential travel to Ukraine. In a statement, it said the Sri Lankan embassy is in touch with more than 40 Sri Lankans, including 14 students there. The ministry has requested all Sri Lankans in Ukraine to remain vigilant and to be in touch with the embassy based in Turkey. As Sri Lankans, what can we observe uh, from the ongoing Ukraine crisis? Now, we know that there are special economic zones here in Sri Lanka in which different laws are being enacted. We are importing fuel from India uh, given the shortage of fuel in the country. At a time like this, if India and China enter into a conflict, how will Sri Lanka be impacted? How will we handle uh, such a geopolitical situation? On the other hand, what if another country recognizes Trincomalee as a state that is separate from Sri Lanka? Will we not be in a position of being forced into a corner on our homeland? Sri Lanka is a tiny island compared to Ukraine. Ukraine is being held up against a wall uh, given the today's situation. Now, what would happen to us in a similar situation? Because we see what's happening across the world. And it's time for the authorities here at home to take note of these situations.